mashallah. This year we're very excited to showcase for you all of what the girls have been working on and showing you kind of progress that they have made through the year. So they're all incredibly excited, a little bit nervous, they're a little bit jittery, so be patient with them, inshallah, as they come onto the stage and also exit off the stage. The transitions sometimes are a little bit difficult. So give them, please be patient with us as we do this. Everybody's a non-professional here in the setting of um, organizing a celebration, mashallah. To share with you just a little bit before we start, we just do a little bit of intro on the Rahma Foundation itself so that you know what this program is if you're new to it. We have some family members that might be joining for the first time to attend the children's presentation. The Rahma Foundation was founded um, almost 10 years ago now, mashallah, a good deal of time has passed. It is a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to teaching Muslim women and girls their Islamic deen and also how to be as a young Muslim woman and then also a woman, inshallah, as well. So we work with the whole spectrum of ages. We start from the age four, so those will be the youngest group. They will perform the first. They are the frogs and buddies. And we go all the way through the ages into our elementary, middle school, high school, and then also have the women's holiday that's been attending here in this room every Friday, parallel to the girls' program that was happening all through long, inshallah. So alhamdulillah, the goal of our programs is really twofold. One is that we build sisterhood amongst the girls, that they have a consistent group of sisters that they meet with weekly, that they form friends with, that they really have a solid bond with other Muslim girls. Many of our girls are public schools, some are homeschooled, and some are Islamic schooled. But in all cases, <coughs> that having a strong bond of sisterhood is very important. And I think, inshallah, you'll see for yourself that they've been able to accomplish that goal. The second goal that we have is to grow the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the hearts of the girls. And they have been working consistently on this throughout the year. And I hope inshallah that will show in the presentations tonight. As you probably all know, other than the Friday night halakas, we also do um, summer camps. So those are coming up and we'll share a little bit more detail about those as we go through our evening. But those are very exciting programs where all the girls from all the groups coalesce into one program in the summertime. They will start in Ramadan, and this year we're actually really excited to say that we're going to have a full summer program. Usually we just have a Ramadan camp, but this year we're actually having a full program that lasts the entire summer. And you can opt in to put your girls in the camp week by week. So if they're traveling some weeks, that's okay. The weeks you're here, they can opt to be put into the camp, inshallah. So we're really excited to do that. Um, and then in addition to the Foundation, other than girls' work and youth work, we also have women's halakas and women's groups. Um, and so, for example, on May 20th, the so next Saturday, we have an all-day Ramadan prep for women. Um, and there'll be five women scholars who will come and teach, inshallah. So that's one of the other goals that I have on the So with that introduction, inshallah, we want to hold back from the um, entertainment of the girls. I'll just let you know the program that we're going to have. We're going to have each group come in turn. But please be, note that we're going to hit Salt and Maghrib um, roughly 8 o'clock. So we will have to break for prayer and then we'll come back to complete the program. We ask you kindly to return so that the girls who have not presented have a chance to present. And also because we have a pop up um, dinner with all of the parents after the program has completed. So the entire program is done, then we will have our pop up dinner. So we ask you to stay for the full duration. We plan to finish by nine o'clock, inshallah. With that, I'm going to turn over the mic to Sister Amina Abdullah. She has been our camp, uh, well, also our camp coordinator, but the Friday night Halakha coordinator all year long and a really phenomenal person, alhamdulillah, all of you have interacted with her. And I ask you to keep her in your thoughts and we'll have the mic and she'll explain to you the different groups and what the program will be tonight. Thank you. Um, so just to touch on what Rania said, um, afterwards we'll have the potluck. So when we finish the potluck, um, just for organizational purposes to make it a little easier, you all can exit through those doors there and then turn to the right. The potluck is actually going to be held in the Rainbows area. And I know it's a small area, but mashallah, the masjid has, I think, five different events going on tonight. Um, so uh, we'll go out that door and go to the right, and the, um, the potluck will be over in that area. If there's any busy bees girls that have come in late, um, your group is actually out in the hallway. So if you're a busy bee, need to go out through those doors and join your group out in the hallway. Um, so we're going to start with Quran, inshallah. We have two of our girls um, who are busy bees. Um, every week in the busy bees 
Angelica, they recite Sura Neva. So these two girls are going to start um, our performances tonight by reciting Sura Neva.
right about now. Mashallah, you enjoyed the frogs and bunnies. Mashallah, so cute and adorable. Some might ask why we start so early, but I have found that my teachers of spirituality have said that really you have to plant the seeds of the love of Allah very early. And so it is not too young to start, right at the preschool age, the four and five year olds. And if there are those who are not familiar with our program, frogs and bunnies, the reason we call them that is because they're two characters, Froggy and Bunny. And through Froggy and Bunny, they learn all kinds of characteristics that are positive, and also kind of character building through this, these characters that are actually puppets of Frog and Bunny. And through that, the kids actually start to really understand what are good traits and what are negative traits, but in a very um, positive manner, and always making sure that the love of Allah is at the center of that. So next up, we have our rainbows, inshallah, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. Okay, so this is our rainbows group. Our, rainbow, our rainbows group is pretty much our first through third grade group. Um, and here we actually start um, the halakha um, 
portion with the girls. Um, of course, it's all age appropriate. Um, it's much shorter um, than the other older girls. But they do have their own uh, weekly halakha, and it's based on themes like friendship, um, respecting our parents, loving our moms, helping out at home, showing kindness towards other others, um, giving charity, table manners, things like that.
next in line, we have our busy bees. And we're really excited to, that's on the girls, excited to have the busy bees. The busy bees are ages nine to 11. So they are roughly grades three to five. We can just have everybody quiet down just a little bit, inshallah. Thank you. And as a reminder for those uh, children that need to be in babysitting, there is a babysitting right outside the door that is free of charge. If your children are acting up a little bit, mashallah, we ask you to take them out and them to the babysitting. Thank you for everybody else's enjoyment. So the um, Be Busy Bees will be performing, inshallah, and they have been working really hard on their performances. They have some wonderful crafts that they have been working on, but also to show you, showcase a little bit about what they do in a group. As you know, the idea of a busy bee is that it's, it is clean, it is hard working, and they all have to work together as a team to collect honey from all different flowers, so basically knowledge from all different backgrounds, and put it together cohesively with something that has shifa or healing to people, the honey. And so our busy bees, mashallah, have been working on healing the world and healing themselves, so this is what they're going to share with you, inshallah ta'ala. Busy Bees group, um, and while they're getting on stage, I'll tell you a little bit about the posters that they made. Um, this is one of the projects that they worked on this year, and the theme of it was um, equality and trying to live label-free. So the objective behind it was so that they could learn how to live in a society um, where they don't judge each other based on appearances, um, and that they all treat each other fairly. ago, we watched a video about 
labels. We learn that labels are wrong. Labels such as black, African American, white, American, terrorists, Muslims. That's the worst one to me. So we learn that we should not use labels whatsoever in any type of situation. Whether somebody insulted you, you should treat them the way you want to be treated as well. Whether somebody hurt you physically, mentally, or in any other way, you should not label them with anything. As she said, we learned about not to use labels, labels and I put there's no such thing as black and white. There's, we're all the same and we should be named the same thing. I believe that we should be treated equally and we shouldn't be judged by our skin color or any, or our religion or anything. And I believe that we should all have, that we should all be together and never, um, and like who should be treated nicely and fairly. Uh, my poster is about uh, not putting labels on anyone because it doesn't matter what color you are, it just matters who you are and you're always loved. <coughs> my poster was about how um, everyone is equal and it might not look so like what is this, but um, it actually has a hidden meaning to it, how all these shades of colors are different shades of people's skin colors, and all the pink dots in here are people, and it shows how everyone's supposed to love each other, and we all are equal. Thank you. join the girls over in the corner so they can watch the rest of the performances. So while our sixth grade rosebuds get ready to perform their skits, um, I want to take a small break here to uh, talk to you a little bit about the summer camp. Um, a lot of you have registered, mashallah, and as Kalarania said, we have two um, kind of options for the summer camp. We have our traditional Ramadan camp uh, where the girls will rotate through three stations each day, Monday to Thursday, for three weeks. Um, and that is Quran, Arabic, and then either fifth of Wudu and Salah or um, Arts and Crafts Station. So that will remain the same. It'll be three weeks in Ramadan. It'll be from June 5th to June 22nd. I know a lot of kids are still in school during that time, um, but the local schools actually here in this MCC area finish school on June 6th. We were not planning on having a Ramadan camp, um, but the community here asked us to do it, um, so mashallah, that's what we've done. It'll probably be a smaller camp, but we're already getting a lot of good numbers registering. Um, and then after Ramadan, from July 10th to August 17th, we will have another camp, which will still be Islamically based, but it'll also offer a variety of fun activities. Um, play sculpting, cooking, theater, um, different things like that, that are all kind of based on common themes and incorporating some fun activities for the girls to do as well. And we'll also have our two, two week team camp, the last week of July and the first week of August. So if you have not reg registered yet, I encourage you to register before spaces fill up. We are getting a lot of requests for sponsorships for the summer camp. Um, so if you can afford to sponsor a child, even if it's just for one week or half of a week, um, we really, really encourage you to sponsor a child who otherwise would not be able to attend the camp um, without the help of the community. So I'm going to pass around the donation box. Um, and if everyone can give a little bit of something, believe me, it all adds up. And then we're able to expand the camp and you know, open it up to all girls. Because uh, the philosophy of the Rock Foundation is always that every girl that wants to attend is able to attend in child life. The fun that Amina said when we started the Rafa Foundation 10 years ago, our motto was that 
Um, no one is ever turned away for lack of funds, so we do a very um, cohesive job, inshallah, of collecting um, and being able to sponsor all girls from all communities. Alhamdulillah, the MCC Masjid has been incredibly generous. We posted our Friday halakas and our summer camps. This is actually will be the eighth year of our summer camp. So for eight years, this masjid has opened its doors um, to us, may Allah bless them, and the people who run the, this facility, mashallah. Um, but that means that we also have girls coming from all over the Bay Area, not just the MCC communities, so from all the different pockets, down from far down from South, um, South Bay, actually from the south of South Bay, South San Jose, all the way up to the North Bay. We have folks coming from quite a distance to attend these programs to have a quality um, program that is based in Islam with sisterhood for the girls, alhamdulillah. So we ask you then to help us with getting all the girls who'd like to attend from all the different pockets of the Bay Area to attend. Also, I want to say that the box is going around because we have all of our uh, teachers that we really like to, um, uh, who come here on a voluntary basis, week in and week out. They do this halakha for the girls. In addition, they do their own training halakha. So they come here every night on Fridays and put in at least double the time of the girls' halakha to prepare and for themselves to have a halakha of training, a teacher's mentorship halakha. And they do this voluntarily and free of charge. So we ask you to please be generous so that we're able to compensate them with an honorarium or a gift, inshallah. You have been incredibly generous thus far, and we have, uh, we'd like to continue that, inshallah. So that's also will be what the box is going around for. Thank you, inshallah. One last thing about the donation box. Um, you notice that it started with a few dollars and some change in the box because when we, I walked in the door, one of the girls brought to me her zakat jar um, that she actually made in the disease class, um, and she brought me her jar with seven dollars, and she said she wanted to donate it to the Rahman Foundation. So, mashallah. Um, I just wanted to, to make that note to you. So, um, the box started with one of our own disease girls, mashallah. So um, now, if these sixth grade rosebuds. Come on up to the stage. They have a couple of short skits, and I'm guessing um, we possibly might be breaking after that. We'll see how the time goes, inshallah. As the girls are coming and making their way, I want to share with you a couple words about rosebuds and what the rosebuds halakhet exactly is. There are two levels to the rosebuds. We have essentially it's our middle school halakha. So these are the sixth graders, and after Melody, we'll be having our seventh and eighth graders come, and then after them, the high schoolers and children. Rosebud starts with sixth grade, and this is a halakha where there's a big transition point because this is the time in a girl's life where she's undergoing all kinds of changes, essentially maturing from girlhood into womanhood. And so the discussions then are very um, poignant discussions on that maturity process. So we cover all aspects of it. They've been discussing kind of the maturity process and what happens at the age of puberty. And then from there, also all the emotional and spiritual discussions that need to happen as a girl is starting to mature, mature and go through that stage of life, inshallah. So their teachers are excellent in really having these programs, uh, having these discussions on a weekly basis. And we're excited to have this couple skits that will show what they have been learning. But just so you have a sense of what exactly is happening, it's being discussed every Friday evening.
you're great. I'm sorry, I could have asked for help, but it's the first thing the teacher teaches us, and I just don't get what she wants to teach us. Is there any way you can get extra credit? I don't know. I'll ask her tomorrow. But since I have homework right now, I don't really understand the chapter. Can you help me? Yeah, sure. I'm so glad that we're shopping together. I have no idea what to wear for the school field trip. I know, right? Hey, what do you guys think of the sweatshirt? I was thinking about thinking about wearing this with a pair of skinny jeans. I think that looks nice. Yeah, that looks cute. Thanks for your advice. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it on right now. Don't you don't you think that's too short? Should we say something? No, it's her business. She can wear whatever she wants to. I guess you're right. Long skirt and long dress instead. It's nice. It's nice. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it's looser and longer. Yeah, I guess you're right. It is more appropriate. Me too. We have time to continue with our seventh and eighth grade rosebuds. We have three girls that will can be coming up to the stage um, to recite short speeches, inshallah. One of the comments I got from the rosebuds teachers and the Birth of Paradise teachers um, concerning the Halifa program um, throughout this year on program is that they just didn't get enough time to cover all the topics that they wanted. Um, and they didn't get a chance to answer all of the many questions that the girls had. So that would be one of the benefits of the teen camp, if you decide to enroll your daughters in the teen camp this coming summer. The teen camp is geared specifically towards um, middle schoolers and high schoolers. They're together, but they're separated. When it comes to the time, 
they're separated. Middle schools have their own halakha, and high schools have their own halakha. So just keep that in mind as you're contemplating registering for the summer camps. If you can get your middle schoolers and high schoolers into the teen camp, that would be a really wonderful experience for them. All right, so right now, we have three of our seventh and eighth grade rosebuds that have some speeches that they want to share.
Sound from Roblox. Thank you so much, Dana. That's, that's such a beautiful piece of calligraphy. We'll be sure to display it wherever we have that from the foundation programming, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, sisters and brothers, I hope through these speeches, this is kind of unscripted. They did this on their own, mashallah. And I hope it kind of shows their love for each other and love for the program and love for their teachers. Um, before we will be breaking for about it shortly, but I did want to tell you a couple of things. Some of you might wonder the topics that were discussed between the sixth grade, seventh, and eighth grade groups that have come up here. Um, they're heavy topics, they're not easy topics to discuss. The coming of age topics, the discussion on modesty, discussion on clothing, discussion on boys, discussion on other things as well. They're all going to Google now. <laughs> other things that are relevant to this age group are not easy to discuss. So if you're wondering how we go about doing this, I want to remind you, all that the way we have, by the way, we have over 100 girls on Friday night that we're teaching, and 20 teachers, mashallah. These teachers are taught in a mentorship style. So while they are teaching, they themselves are being taught. So they have a halakha that they attend with me after they are done teaching on a weekly basis. And we go through and talk about um, their own spiritual growth and upbringing, so they can use some of that in their teaching. Also, we have teacher workshops, which we do several times throughout the year, that they work on the curriculum, and we supervise that curriculum, we edit and help them figure out what exactly to teach, the books they should use, the resources, and then they come to us for questions. So this halakha program is a mentorship-based halakha, where the teacher is being mentored, so that she's able to then mentor the girls, and our older girls then turn around eventually and to mentor their younger sisters. And with that, I would like to say that we're definitely looking for our middle school, for excuse me, our high school girls to help us um, in our summer camp to be mentors or counselors for the younger girls. Now it's their time to shine and actually help us teach the younger age groups during the summer camp and until they have their their own camp. So inshallah ta'ala, this is how we continue to sow the seeds and continue to kind of make sure that these seeds grow up. Hence the name Rose Buds. They are buds, right? That one day will grow into roses, inshallah ta'ala. And parallel to that, as I mentioned previously, the moms, many of you who are in the room tonight, that the sisters have their own parallel halakha every Friday night. And as my teacher who created these programs calls it, she says those are the rose buds and the moms are the rose hips. <laughs> and you can't grow the rose fully unless you have both the bud and the hip in place. True? Mashallah, the rose hip. So alhamdulillah, it's a program to make sure that what's taught here is solidified by making sure it's solidified by the mothers themselves at home as well, and parents in general. Alhamdulillah. With that, I want to remind you as we break for Maghrib just shortly that we're going to be continuing and coming back for our high school program, followed by our teacher appreciation program. So please make sure you're back here because we want to make sure that high schoolers are heard, their presentation, and also that we appreciate our teachers for all the work they've done. We have um, some uh, gifts that we'd like to share with them, and also gifts for your daughters. After the ceremony part, then we will have a potluck um, in the, in right outside of this area, inshallah ta'ala. So please do come back after Melodip and do not disappear, inshallah. <laughs> 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 we'll break for Melodip for about 15 minutes. Assalamu alaikum. Um, Halakha, um, and not too much of the other activities, um, because they are very much consumed um, in uh, Quran recitation and discussions. They have a lot of really, really good talks about the issues that they're dealing with in high school. Um, obviously, these days and times, it's not easy being in public school. Um, and that's pretty much what their talks are around. So um, I will let them come up to the stage.
rainbows and busy bees. Okay, when you all performed, everyone was really, really quiet. So I'm going to ask that you all do the same thing for the birds of paradise, okay? I need you guys to be really, really quiet so that everyone can hear the beautiful poem that they have for us. Thank you. She was a trustworthy. Who was she? She was a businesswoman. Who was she? She was an orphan. Who was she? She was a prominent figure. Who was she? She helped increase the Muslims when there were few. Who was she? She was an honest woman. Who was she? She was very intelligent. Who was she? She was most beloved by a prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who was she? She was respected. Who was she? She came from a good family. Who was she? She was supportive. Who was she? She was powerful. Who was she? She used to feed and clothe the poor. Who was she? She was strong. Who was she? She was charitable. Who was she? We yearn to be like you in words and actions and character too. Pure of heart, you gave us the perfect start. Truthful in words, honest in dealings. With piety, you alleviated anxiety, giving peace, solace, tranquility. My mother, you are the perfect role model, a woman of strength, humble and chaste, my support and comfort. Thank you. Thank you. 
program for the girls who are ready to take on the hit of put on. It's not just the put on program, but rather it is put on and tajweed, but also sita and development of character. And the lead teacher for that is Ustad al um, who is an Azhari scholar, mashallah, studied in many different countries and is in the Bay Area, one of our top uh, female teachers of the area. And it's an after school put on program. I was asked by the Rahma Foundation to share with you about FOH. This program happens not here at the MCC, but rather it's uh, currently happening in Fremont. Um, and we are looking to actually expand and open a new location. And with that, we're asking for uh, many of the parents would like to consider something as a Sadat Jariya to actually help them open up that new location. They're looking for sponsors to help them pay their monthly rent to open up the place. And then all day long, hopefully, this will be an after-school program, but potentially also will be a day program. Um, so if you would like your charitable causes to go to a group of girls who are learning, uh, becoming our next adding us, inshallah, right? Learning to un, learning sharia, and so on. Um, you're welcome to come to me after the program and tell me if you're interested in this. I'm going to be writing down the names of people who would like to do consistent monthly sponsorships for the Foundations of Hips program, inshallah. I don't want any <laughs> donations today because I'm not sure that they're going to go ahead with any location. But just for those who would like to pledge, if, if they do, go ahead and then inshallah so that they know that there's some people supporting the program. That program, typically when we have a celebration for this uh, end of the year program, we usually have the FOH girls here also doing this. For those of you who have attended previous years, you remember the other girls were here as well doing their put on recitation. They're not here tonight, maybe some of them are in the, in the audience, but the group themselves, the dozen girls who are in that program, aren't themselves here tonight as a group. But they'll have their end of the year celebration later, they're not quite done with their program just yet for the year. But we ask you to keep them in your du'as too, because my goal, inshallah ta'ala, is that we have the next generation of teachers coming through, and we have the next generation <coughs> of confidants coming through, and the next generation of hadinats coming through. Um, here in our local area, so please do continue to make draw for all of these programs and shall we Before we give out the gifts for our teachers, I was given a request by the sisters who attend Kalaranya's Friday night women's halakha that they have something they would like to come up um, and say. So I'm not sure who's coming, but I was told that somebody's coming to the the microphone to say a few words. Presenting the woman halakha, uh, Dr. Rania was our teacher, so we would like to take this opportunity to really thank her for sharing the knowledge of our beautiful dean with us and for being very patient with us, answering all our questions. Uh, so for some of us, she took us from a long way, including myself, so we're very thankful and we making dua for you, your spouse your family, your children, and all the progenies, and all of us. May Allah protect you and reward you for all the work you're doing for our community and for us our community.
Jazakumullah khair. I was, it's very touching, mashallah. And I truly, no thanks required, as they say in Arabic, that shukr ala wajib. So there is no thanks when something is actually a wajib, incumbent upon you. And the philosophy of my own teachers was that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you something, then you must pay it forward and give in return, subhanAllah, without any thanks or any request for that. Although I thank you so much, mashallah, for <laughs> the kind words. And most important, your du'as. I'm most excited about the card. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I also want to say something about the woman very quickly. I think some of the spouses are here tonight. Um, and also the, the girls are here tonight. I want you to know, girls, that your moms have been coming here week in and week out, studying and learning, just like all of you have been studying and learning. And they have been wonderful students and have asked wonderful questions. And I hope, inshallah, that we'll reflect in helping you navigate the date and helping you answer your questions, inshallah ta'ala. So um, you have inspired your moms just that they have inspired you, inshallah. And for me as a teacher, I should say there is no teacher without students, inshallah. And also that you do more for me than I could ever possibly do for you. Barakallah.
Somebody please take a picture and send it to us. <laughs> Teacher Medium, who's actually as a tuna student, she's the one who put together the slideshow for us. We have Teacher Sajida, Teacher Maham, Teacher Noor. She's the 
first to arrive and the last to leave. She checks on in every single group and coordinates with each one of these teachers and coordinates with each one of you parents as well when you have your questions or concerns, anything about coming later, coming earlier, my daughter this or my daughter that, or my teacher or the teachers when they need anything, any supplies, anything at all, all filters through Kala Amina. So her life over the last several years has become the Rahma Foundation Holocaust. together that her family be blessed and that she be blessed for all the work that she's done and inshallah she sees the fruits of the labor that she has put forward here so this is a very small token of appreciation from the Rahma Foundation to her. Yeah, so now the girls are probably wondering when is the time for their gifts, right? But let me... <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. You guys have been so wonderful so far. Now keep that end up going, inshallah. <laughs> the last thing I'm going to say, inshallah, about the teachers is that all of them have received a gift, and you'll see that from them. It's a frame that has a very special phrase to me, and it has a message written to them on the back. But it's a phrase that I learned from my teachers, and it says, um, grow where you're planted. Grow where you're planted, I'll show you what I mean. <coughs> grow where you're planted. This is a phrase I always heard one of my teachers say, and it means that wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you or puts you, make sure that you grow wherever it is, wherever in the world it puts you. Our teachers are just like that. They have been learning and this knowledge with it. They have taught your girls. They have planted seeds within your girls, inshallah. Also, some of them are college students, some of them are Zaytuna students from other states even and they will travel to their home communities. And we pray that wherever they go next, and wherever their journey goes next, they will grow where Allah has planted them, and take this knowledge and your du'as to continue to grow, and the same with your daughters, inshallah ta'ala. So continue to make du'a for them, inshallah. Now, we're going to ask, we're going to present the gifts to our girls, the end of the year gifts, inshallah. And we're going to also have a share together the meal. Um, the, there's a wonderful spread prepared for you outside, inshallah. But we want to make sure that we also end with a closing du'a. <coughs> inshallah. So inshallah, please raise your hands in du'a. We'll just do a small du'a together to end the program. Each class in turn will get their gifts and we'll head to the next room for the call. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu wa ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ajma'in. Girls, quiet down please. Oh Allah, we ask you to open your doors of mercy and to shower your mercy down upon us. Ya Rabbi, this group of women and girls and families that have come here week in and week out only for the sake, only for your sake, only for increasing your, uh, in your knowledge and bettering their deen. Ya Rabbi, we ask you to bless each and every step they took to come here and each and every step they take in the path of your deen. Ya Rabbi, ya Rabbi we ask you to keep our feet steadfast on the straight track until the last day. Ya Rabbi, each of these girls and each of the families that are here, we ask you to keep them on the deen until the last day. Ya Rabbi, we ask you to grow the love of you and the love of your prophets and the love of your son in our hearts. Ya Rabbi, we ask you that this gathering is blessed and that you grant us beneficial knowledge and you help each and every one of us, including the youngest of the girls, implement that knowledge. Ya Rabbi, make us ulama alimin, those who are knowledgeable and do upon their knowledge. Ya Rabbi, grant our girls good companionship, good bonds of sisterhood, sisters who will be friends until the very end, Ya Rabbi. Ya Rabbi, we ask you that their friends be people who help them and not hold them down. Ya Rabbi, we know that you have said that the sahib is sahib, that the friend is the one who pulls, and we ask you for friends that pull in the right direction and not the wrong. Ya Rabbi, we ask you for the kind of knowledge that is beneficial and that you take away whatever was not beneficial but was taught all year long and you forgive us the teachers, Ya Rabbi. Ya Rabbi, grant the teachers and all of them and all of their families, we ask Ya Rabbi, grant them all that is good, grant them blessing in their life, the sacrifices that they have taken and their families 
The endless days and nights and hours I have put into, pro uh, into this program, we ask you to make it blessed. And on the last day that they see those hasalat, Ya Rabbil Alameen, waiting for them. Ya Rabbi, you know that we could not uh, compensate them financially, but their hasalat are what will compensate them on the day of judgment. Let it be a light for them in this life, and a light for them in their brain, and a light in the hereafter. Ya Rabbi, we ask you that all the mothers that have come here are not really knowing what it is we're about to teach their daughters, that Ya Rabbi, that you have put um, in their hearts happiness with what their girls have learned, and that the character of their girls, their adult, has become better yet. Ya Rabbi, we ask you that the girls have bid, the, the chil our children have bid towards, towards their parents, righteousness towards their parents. Ya Rabbi, bless us with children who have righteousness towards us, and bless us to be righteous towards our parents. Ya Rabbi Adami, we ask you that, you, that you please, please, please help each and every girl in this program be from the Salihats, be from the Mu'minat. Ya Rabbi, let her be from the Hafidat of Qur'an. Ya Rabbi, let her be from those who enter Jannah, Ya Kareem. Let every child in this room be a reason why their parents go to Jannah. Ya Rabbi, let our children be a reason why we enter Jannah and not the hellfire, Ya Kareem. Ya Rabbi, do not let our families be a tribulation to us. Ya Rabbi, don't let our children be a tribulation to us. Ya Rabbi, let this be something that grows light in us and gives out light to others, Ya Kareem. Let us be from those who have nur ala nur. Ya Rabbi, let us be from the people of paradise. And on the last day, Ya Kareem, that we are in the highest levels of paradise with the Salihin and the Shahada and the Anbiya and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rabbi, bless us and bless our families and increase us in all that is good. And the Arabi, we raise our hands at this moment in time to thank our teachers and any person that has taught us even a letter of the deen. Ya Rabbi, we also remember our parents that we and ask you to bless them and increase their status. Ya Rabbi, we also remember our sisters and brothers in faith and humanity across the world. Those who are in war, oppression, or difficulty, we ask you to alleviate that. Ya Ilahi, Ya Rabbi, we ask you to be from those who are charitable. Ya Rabbi, as Ramadan is, uh, is right at our door, Right at our doorsteps, we ask Ya Kareem to balighna Ramadan. Ya Rabbi, let us enter into Ramadan. But Ya Rabbi, do not let us exit Ramadan without being completely forgiven. Ya Rabbi, don't let us exit Ramadan without being from those who you have taken out of the hellfire. Ya Rabbi, don't let us exit Ramadan without being those who have a clean slate like the day their mother bore them. Ya Rabbi, Ya Kareem, accept from us our our prayers, except from us our qiyam, except from us our siyam, except from us our charity, I believe, except from us, Ya Rabbi, all that we aspire to do, increase our intentions in good and help us implement that, Ya Kareem. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wala hawla wala quwata illa billahi l'alim al-azim. Nas'aluka Ya Rabbi, nas'aluka Ya Kareem, bi husna al-qitam, husna al-qitam, husna al-qitam, the best of endings, Ya Kareem. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. صلى الله على هذه محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين وعلى أن تفضلوا الهداية والنصر والسلام في كل مكان نسألك يا ربي بالسر سورة الفاتحة For acceptance of this dua, please read سورة الفاتحة آمين آمين بارك الله فيكم We ask you to keep us in your duas. We look forward to seeing you in the summertime. And with that, we will announce our gifts to the girls.